so he picks up four points for a total of eight after two events. Well, Mel Stewart is up next. Since 1989, he has been ranked number one in the world in the 200-meter butterfly. Sabre doesn't seem to care about that right now, though, Mike. Very well-rounded athlete, bright, articulate. I don't know if this is a bright idea to go against Sabre in assault. Mel looking for an opening. <laughs> Not too happy with that first gun. So station number two now. Let's it fly. He's going to bring it down a little bit. He's at station number three. Sabre laying down the steady barrage. Ooh, that was close. Sabre's done everything but hit Mel. That one high. Ten seconds to go. One final chance at station number five. Oh! Before he can get there, though, Sabre nails him in the right shoulder. But give Mel Stewart four points for firing four weapons. Good run, though. Mel, a resident of Knoxville, Tennessee, has been swimming since age six, and he is the master of one of swimming's most difficult disciplines, the butterfly. In fact, he's the first man ever to swim the 200-meter butterfly below 1 minute 56 seconds. Impressive. Event number three in this gold medal challenge of Champions 2 is Hank Tuff. For the Gladiators, it will be Sabre. And up first for our Olympic athletes, it'll be Mark Freeland. He is currently tied after two events with Mel Stewart. Both athletes have eight points. Hey, tough. Let's see if I can knock Mark Freeland out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, tough, Mark. Here I come. After this event, a reminder, the Olympic athlete with the lowest score will be eliminated. Again, contenders have 60 seconds to cross this grid of 48 rings. Mark, our former boxer from Brooklyn, New York, struggling a little bit up there. Right now, he's just trying to hang on. I don't think he's particularly worried about how Sabre's doing, although Mark's looking pretty good. Sabre hanging on by one arm, <laughs> using the other to try to pull Mark in. Mark, not too anxious to get too near Sabre, and I don't blame him. Under 15 <laughs> seconds now. He's trying to advance. I'll give him credit for that. And again, our athletes, oh! Sabre goes down. Mark, if he was a little bit closer, might have had a chance for the 10. Instead, he lasts the entire 60 seconds and gets five points for a draw. I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> well, now Laser will see if he can do it against Mitch Gaylor. America's number one ranked gymnast in 1983 and 1984, Mitch Gaylor. What do you think about this Mitch Gaylor guy? You know, he might have been good in gymnastics, but I'll get him on the ring. Imagine he'll have too much trouble on these rings. An Olympic competition, however, you are competing for yourself, against yourself, Ooh. and having the judges look at you. Boy, is he moving well, though. He is a natural. This is fun. I guarantee you, Gaylord's never had to go against something like this, though. He is having a ball. Oh, shoot. <laughs> if he could get that other oh, ring. No. Oh, Laser with all those hours of experience. Ready? <laughs> I thought Laser might let him stay up there a little longer, you know, have a little longer right. conversation, get to know one another. <laughs> Just another day at the office for Laser. Mitch accustomed to competing in front of judges, but judges don't have long legs like these. Laser, I know this has got to boost your ego just a little bit, taking down a former 
Olympic gymnast. You better believe it. Yeah, he, uh, he might have been good in the rings in them days, but this is gladiator day today, <laughs> and I came out on top. <laughs> good job. Mitch, the only male U.S. gymnast to have two skills named internationally after him, the Gaylord Flip and the Gaylord Two, considered to be the two most difficult and spectacular skills in gymnastics. Mitch Gaylord. A look at Turbo, our in-house resident Lord of the Rings and Hank Tuff. One stop shot. The puck ends here. He awaits our next Olympian, Mel Stewart, and the proposition for Mel, quite simple, he's got to get at least five to assure himself a chance to move on to the second half of this competition. <laughs> Mel drew a tough gladiator. Turbo is so good on the rings. Yeah, because Mel is an excellent all-around athlete. We watched him yesterday in practice, and he took to all of our events here at Gladiator Arena with great speed. Oh, he's looking, he's getting a defensive posture already. Oh, wow. And Turbo's got the lock, and <laughs> Turbo lets him down gently. No points for Mel Stewart, so he is our first Olympian to fall by the wayside. Mel knows all about the butterfly, but he wasn't ready for Turbo's version of the Venus flytrap. Gotcha. Well, Mel, you told me, too, that you are very sore today after practicing just yesterday. Yeah, they were, they were training us yesterday. The actual gladiators were. I think it was a plot. I think they wanted to get us sore <laughs> so that we wouldn't compete well today. Well, I guess it worked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Thanks, Mel. So our swimmer falls by the wayside. Mitch Gaylord and Mark Breeland remain. And up next, Zap will try her hand against our Olympic female athletes. Welcome back to our American Gladiators Gold Medal Challenge of Champions 2. We continue with women's hang tough. After this event, one of our three Olympians will be eliminated. Our sprint champion, Valerie Briscoe, hoping it's not her. She is up first in Hank Tuff. She'll have to deal with Zap and Valerie, of course, during the 1980s, one of America's top female sprinters. She was terrific in 84 when she won three gold medals. Very different proposition here against Zap in Hank Tuff. Olympic sprinters do do a lot of weight training, so Valerie uh, pretty strong in the upper body. She looks great. Again, given very little time to practice, she has adapted oh so well. Strong and smooth. She gets this next ring. She might have a chance to reach that platform. Desperately searching for that other ring. We're under 30 seconds. Zap now crossing over. Now Valerie's got another one. She'll have to backtrack, though. Oh. And she can't hang on. Had a chance to pick up five points after a great start. The arm strength kind of gave way, and she's very disappointed with herself, as you might expect. For the Gladiators, there's Jazz chalking up. Michelle said she is not looking forward to this. She has a bad left shoulder. She had it operated on while she was still a diver, and yesterday while practicing, she kind of pulled it out, so a little apprehensive. She'll give it her best shot and when you come off that 10-meter tower and try to rip those entries. It puts a lot of torque on that shoulder. She looks pretty good so far. She's great, and she's still smiling. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no. We spoke, we spoke it too soon. Yes. <laughs> I guess I jinxed her. So Michelle stands pat with 12 points after three events, and the proposition for Betty Okino is simply get 10 or you're out of the competition. Betty Okino trains in Houston, Texas, and of course that old Houston-Dallas rivalry heats up again. Two ex you are gonna see what's gonna happen. She's in my backyard now. She's Lone Star Tough and one of our new gladiators. She's Dallas. Hey! 
175 pounds. Betty said she never trained on the rings, but she practiced yesterday and said it reminded her a lot of the bars. She said she had fun. In 1992, she was the silver medalist in the uneven bars at the World Championships. Betty looking good. She needs these 10 points desperately. 30 oh. seconds to go. It's not likely that she is going to hang tough, but she doesn't. So Dallas wins that Texas battle, and she's already got her fan club here at Gladiator Arena. So Betty Opino goes by the wayside. And she joins Mel Stewart in the locker room with Lisa, who's with them both. Mel, I <laughs> guess that red was the unlucky color today. <laughs> red was the unlucky color. I have no ego. The show did nothing for me. It deflated me entirely. Oh, no way. You said you got a pretty good workout today and yesterday, didn't you? Yesterday, I, I mean, so different from gymnastics. I figured, OK, I'm in shape. This will be OK. Right. I wake up this morning, and I could not move. <laughs> It was not easy. Well, maybe we'll train again. We'll get him next time. M maybe. <laughs> okay. Thank you both. More to come. The wall is next. Welcome back to our American Gladiators Gold Medal Challenge of Champions 2. The wall is next for our four remaining Olympians. Our women will start things off. Valerie Briscoe and Michelle Mitchell. Roca tied at 12. Valerie will have Siren after her. Ice will be in pursuit of Michelle. Our wall, 32 feet high. The 10-meter platform, 33 feet high. So this shouldn't bother Michelle at all. Then 60 seconds, the time limit. For the contenders who make it to the top, it's worth 10 points. If after 60 seconds, neither woman has made it to the top, the woman who has made it to the highest point on the wall will be awarded five points. Oh, no, there goes Val. Whoa. Michelle working hard. But ice already even with her. Michelle told me she enjoyed the wall. She practiced on it and was doing very well, but whoa. <laughs> Not a chance. Again, this is a learning curve event. Our gladiators have had hours of practice, so they were at a distinct advantage there. On to the men we move, where Mitch Gaylord has a one-point lead over Mark Breland. Mark's got a deal with Hawk. The Olympians are soft. They may look tough. Squawking again, the Hawk, and Mitch Gaylord will have laser after him. This is it. This is what we've all been waiting for. The final four, and they're all going down. <laughs> well, the Gladiators are extra confident today. We'll see what happens. There they go. You might remember Mitch and Laser met in Hag Tough, Lisa and had it waged a spirited duel. Look how quick Mitch is on this wall, but Laser, so great at climbing this wall. He's trying to hang on, and he could be in trouble. Yeah, he's doing a good job hanging on. You got to give him credit, but oh, baby. See that giant leap of faith <laughs> Laser took? Mark Breland is struggling to hang on. He's got long arms and long legs, but takes more than that. <laughs> Hawk close him in. I don't have any doubt in my mind that, look at this. I know. Oh, oh no. Really slowing the left jab. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about sur your survival instincts taking over. Mark Freeland flicking the left jab out at Hawk to keep him away from his body. Next for Mark, something more is style, the joust. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, and for our Olympic athletes, it is crunch time. Our crunch time event, the joust. Mitch Gaylord trailing Mark Breland by 4, 18, 14. Our Olympic boxer of first. Mark also two-time WBA welterweight world champion. He's going against another world champion, Hawk, a world champion in his own Knockout. mind. Mark looking for the knockout. He can get 10 points. Oh! oh. He forgot to bob when he should have weaved. <laughs> Quick knockout. It certainly was. I think Mark would have been more comfortable with boxing gloves on his hands. That pugil stick certainly didn't do him much good. 
So Mitch can take the lead with a knockout here. It'll be tough, however.